Combat Cast starts now. Hello and welcome to the final combat cast. Oh, there Derek is again. Final combat cast right before the Aftermath launch tomorrow. We're so excited to be here and show you the final two characters in Aftermath. Let's run that down real quick. Who we got with me? Uh, Stephanie Brombach, Senior QA Analyst. Derek Kurtzik, believer that sprinkles should be on all food. Even hot dogs? Uh, yeah, even hot dogs. Wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I'm Tyler Lansdowne, Community Manager at NetherRealm Studios, and we are here to talk about the final two characters of Mortal Kombat Aftermath. One thing that I'm very excited about that I just thought of today is that I have not played these characters or played the story because we've been, of course, under quarantine. I hope everyone is staying safe. So this is the first time I've, like, I'm excited with the fans to try this stuff out the moment it drops. So I'm very excited. We are less than one day away. Let's do it. Very, very cool. Very cool. Uh, so hope everyone, again, like I said, is staying safe. And today we're going to go through some characters of Aftermath and a few other things. And then we're then the waiting begins and we'll all be playing it together tomorrow. And we're all very excited about that. Uh, I guess let's just let's start out. We're going to talk about Shiva. OK, uh, so... I, for one, am very excited about Shiva. We've talked about this. I love grappling characters and I cannot wait to dive in. Stephanie, tell me about tell me more. Well, Shiva debuted in MK3, uh, and yeah, she is a grapple character, rushdown character, power, big damage, big combos, and one of the neat things in this game is we introduced her using a shield. She carries it, it's on her back, she can switch hands, which uses it, it has spikes, so she uses it as like a bludgeoning weapon, also a sharp weapon, and she has a bunch of normal attacks and special moves that use it, it's pretty neat. Well, let's take a quick, let's just do a quick walkthrough of how, let's just how, how Shiva navigates the playing field. Well, I think one of the cooler things is how she uses her forearms in normal attacks. Uh, she has a lot of multi-hit punching moves. That string is cool because it reminds me of her MK3 chain combo. Let's see, she has a lot, a lot of throws, yeah. Just brutal. Yeah, she hits really hard. <laughs> the end two to her fatal blow is the punch walk is back. From Hashtag Laura. punch walk, everybody. Yeah, I, I was punch really punch glad walk. to see that again. I want hashtag the punch walk. Soul Chamber is looking better than ever. Yeah, Soul Chamber looks incredible. Um, so that's that's sort of how uh, Shiva moves around the playing space and how she just overpowers her uh, adversaries. Let's take a look at some of her uh, like her normal moves from right. her, her kit. So starting off, she has this back three, which is an overhead. It uh, has a crushing blow, and the requirement is to punish a low attack. So you can see here, she's going to counter hit that down three and then break her nose. Just go right That's over. pretty awesome. I'll wait three, too. This is my favorite string. Oh. I just think it looks awesome. It's a very fast mid and overhead, and then she can either end it quick or go through the full thing. Very easy to hit confirm. This is her 4 to 1, which is like her best long range strain. Um, she doesn't get like a ton of easy hit confirm damage off of it, but the range is great. This is her knee, and it's her fastest mid. It does not have the range of 4 to 1, but it's really, really quick and safe. It's just like and then the she has a couple. Uh, UMK3 combo, too. Yeah, which I love to see. I also love that uh, one of her grabs is a tribute to her UMK3, where she would throw and then do a standing high kick. Right. I love all the little the little Easter eggs from past games that show up in yes. uh, when characters return. It's pretty awesome. Uh, let's take a look at the default specials for Shiva. So to start off, she has her fireball. I think it's better than it's ever been. It's pretty fast. The amplified version is a mid, which is great for like fireball exchanges. This is a back forward four. It is a throw strike move. Great for ending combos. She can uh, do a ton of damage by amplifying it, and it does dot damage. And it armor breaks, so it's a pretty all-purpose move. Her stomp is, stomp is back. You know, it's her trademark move. It's exactly what you want. It's unblockable, it's trolly. 
It has a crushing blow if she does not miss it three times and Aiden applies it. It does not have to be three in a row. Uh, sorry, you had a question? No. Oh yeah, it doesn't have to be hit three times in a row. It just can't miss. So you can like do two in the first round and then have it loaded for the third or whatever. Uh, she can also hold block to stay in there a little bit longer to trick you if you try to backdash or forward dash out of the way. So it's maybe the most fun you thing about playing. You can actually delay the drop, which is awesome. Yes. Yeah, you'll actually see them look up and when she comes down late. Does it cost any there meter might be a very or to delay the drop? No, it does not. Which is pretty nice. And we might see a variation later that will uh, do some things to the stomp too, so we'll get to that here in a little yes. bit. Uh, let's take a look at variation one. So variation one is kind of stomped based. Uh, first she gains this anti-air grab. And anti-air grab are actually, I believe all of them are buffed across the board in this patch. I know for a fact Shao Kahn's and Terminators and hers are. Um, this one amplifies and you're really big damage. And it's great for if the opponent is trying to stomp, uh, jump out of the stomp move. So you can see here she gets a Juicy combo. It also has a crushing blow if you do the regular and then amplify it. So like you hit with the regular, the opponent tries to jump again, you can do the amplify. Then in this variation she gets her MK3 tremor move, which is like a shorter version of the stomp. It's unblockable, it's like a ground pound basically. And then she can, in this variation, change the direction that she stomps. If you hold forward or back, she can go in front of the opponent or behind the opponent. So it's like if you predict so some, that they're going to try to... Sorry? Oh, I was just going to say some Shiba mind games. Right, like you predict they're going to try to forward dash out, you can actually hold back and then go drop down to where they're going to be dashing. Just really obnoxious for the opponent. I think we had talked also about how her tremor move, you can kind of use that for some trickery too and get your, your uh, anti-air grab out as well. Yes, when Tremor and Anti-Air Grab are equipped in the same loadout, she can actually do the Anti-Air Grab as an Amplify. So what I mean is, like, you can do the Tremor, Amplify it to hold up, and she'll go into the Anti-Air Grab. So if they try to jump over the second hit of the Tremor, uh, you'll actually grab them out of the air and then get a combo, which is super fun. So, so it's like... More mind games. Yeah, so it's almost like two abilities are... I mean, it is two abilities are linked together and have this added benefit if you use them together. Right and on. that skin's kind of like a classic throwback, too. Yeah, it's really cool. I really like the hair. She has... The the default mohawk is super cool. And then she has a bunch of different helmets and then a couple of different hair options. Right on. Let's uh, take a look at variation two. So this one is shield-based. She gets three different special moves. She gets a shield charge, which is great for closing space, and it leads to combos. She also gets this shield spin. When you amplify that, she knocks them away, and this is a crushing blow. And it's for just doing it three times. So the third time you do it, you're gonna get really big damage from your combos. And then she gets this shield toss, and this replaces her standard fireball. So this you can hold it, and it will absorb projectiles, like blast through them, into a crushing blow, and do additional damage. So like if she holds it, releases it, sub zero does ice ball, it'll go past his ice ball, blow that up, it's off screen, mm. and then she gets a crushing blow. Awesome. That's great. Uh, so a wep more of a weapons-based version of Shiva for that one. Exactly. So she gets counter zoning, better mid-range, and then probably the best combos, or some of the best combos she can have. And... Uh, let's take a look at the final variation, which I am super excited about. Yeah, this one is super fun to me. It's 50-50 mix-up based uh, and rushdown based. So she gets this death march, which is like a stance. She can start charging forward, and you can cancel it. Or you can let it go and do the, the big boot. The big boot's a high, but it's plus on block. And it has a crushing blow if you let her run across the whole screen. And then she also has other options from it. She can do the back three, which I showed earlier, which is the overhead. She can pop you up and get combos. So it's like combo starter, mix-up tool, cancel tool, all in one. And then she gets the slow grab. And 
This leads to an Amplified, which sets up dot damage, and the dot is if they backdash or try to jump out, so it like limits their mobility, or they're going to take a bunch of damage. And then she also gets a Crutch Grab, and that leads to a combo starter as well. She can actually do that twice in the same combo to cash out Oof. for like big damage. Oh man. So see, you can see she has a Crouch Grab and a Low Grab, which is the mix-ups like sell themselves. She can do like any of her overhead strings, do the low instead. She can mix up the back three overhead and the low grab. She can just run up and just do them raw. Like this is the version for sure if you just want to do high low mix ups all day. Which is that's what I want to do. And just grab, 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 two player animations all over the place, like just exactly what I'm what I'm looking for. I'm very excited to play Shiva for sure. Right. Like a um, simple that says example. Tyler all over it. Would yep, be her back two is mid overhead, and you can do back two and then cancel in below, and that's going to keep them guessing. So the options are unsafe, but it's like high risk, high reward play style. Like it's a total YOLO. Like just go ham, mix them up. You're going to do a lot of damage. You're going to take a lot of damage if you're wrong, but Shokan don't care. Right, and just like <laughs> Fujin, there, uh, a lot of different types of players will want to play. Uh, her for the different variety of, of variations she does have because they all play very differently yeah they're all like kind of like high risk like mix up but it's different styles like it's like grabs 50 50s and then the stomp mix ups and then kind of more honest footsies of the shield variation that all kind of so it depends on how you want to play the high damaging play style that suits you with still being in that archetype that she has Gotcha. Well, let's take a look at the Fatal Blow. So I think cool. she turned I, out The retrograde. Oh, my. Yeah, I was, I was excited when I heard that she was going to be in the game, and now that I've seen how she plays, I'm just... Like I'm just like everybody who's watching the stream right now. I just want to play the game. Uh, and yeah, it'll be, be coming very soon. <laughs> By the way, my favorite thing about Retro Crate. Okay, so the projector is cool, but the classic arcade games in the background is like Rampage World Tour and Primal Rage are back there. Like, come on, that's amazing. <laughs> I like the uh, hanging Let's take a look at the uh, fake. cardboard oh, cutouts. I think that's my favorite. Oh, yeah. those are incredible. Absolutely. Let's take a look at the fatality. I think this is maybe my favorite in Aftermath. The audio is so gross. <laughs> I want to give big ups Love to the it. social team who put that on. You probably all saw the, uh, the meme they did with the reporter and that... Uh, that fatality last week. That was just perfection. Like so good. Yeah. Um, so that so that right there is Shiva. Shiva and we'll be playing her tomorrow. Grabs, mix ups, just a ton of damage, maybe a little yeah. yellow, and that if that's what you like, let's go. <laughs> yeah, I think she'll be a pretty cool addition to the meta because she's so she kinda reminds me of like the Terminator, where it's just going crazy, everything's doing good damage, it's all high risk, it's very fast paced. I think it's a lot of fun. Like once I started seeing her animation and started really playing her, I'm like, oh my god, like she's just an absolute brawler. It's super fun. Real cool. And she also has um, a lot of cool moves too that we're not showcasing as well. Yep. Yeah, she has yeah, some a lot of stuff that like that, that weren't in a Go tournament ahead. loadout that are pretty neat too. Mm -hmm. Be able to explore those tomorrow when Aftermath launches. Uh, again, you can pre-order Aftermath still, any of the versions you want to, to set up your game how you want it, and you'll get the Eternal Clash skin pack, which we're very excited about. We've seen a lot of those in some of the trailers with the Scorpion, the Frost, and the Sub-Zero skins. Super fantastic. Um, real quick, before we move on to RoboCop, which I'm also excited about, uh, we're going to talk... Uh, we do. There is a, a, a balance patch coming with this uh, for the game, and there's uh, Stephanie was just going to go through a couple things you might see in that, and we'll let let it come out for you all to read it later to see what y'all what happens to your characters and whatnot. But uh, Stephanie, you want to go through a couple characters right now? 
Yeah, so I chose three to go over, and this is not the complete thing. So there are a lot of balance path, uh, balance changes, but they are somewhat small. It's We took a lot of look at like frames, a lot of damage changes, but we did not want to change like everything about the game. Like it's not a, like a massive reworking. We're pretty happy with the meta imbalance of the game right now, but we did want to look at some of the minutia. So I picked three examples of characters that are getting some pretty cool buffs. First is Raiden. Um, so his back one too is like his main footsie tool. That's the main min rage move you want to do. And it's now a little bit safer. And the cool thing is the throw at the end, back one to one plus three is now an actual throw. So if the opponent tries to like jab him out of it, he'll actually interrupt and then grab them and get a little bit of damage. So they could, if they read that, they can punish it, but if they're reading that and trying to duck it, then they're not doing the full punish that they normally would. So it makes his neutral game a little bit safer and a little bit more of a guessing game to use, which is cool. Uh, we also looked at the uh, crushing blow requirement for his electric fly, the torpedo. It is the same, but the requirement has been pushed a little bit closer. So he doesn't, it's, to do uh, the Superman from like full screen, it's now a little bit closer, so it's a little bit better for punishing. And then uh, another thing we looked at is his Storm Cell, which is like his main pop-up. You can now not break away till the last hit. So before, you could break away during even the first hit of it, and then Raiden would be left open for like eternity. Like He could go consult the Elder Gods, come back, and still get punished. So now they're going to have to only break away at the very end being a little bit harder to deal with. And there's like five other changes, but those are kind of fun ones to preview. We'll also talk about Scarlet um, with her. Her 4-4 four, four used to be high-high, and it's now high-mid. So that is this really good advancing string that's like advantage on block, but it was super punishable because it was too high. So now the last hit is a mid. So if the opponent is sitting there ducking and the second hit would have previously whiffed, it's now going to be blocked and she'll be left at advantage. Another thing with Scarlet is her blood port is a little bit faster. That's her teleport. It's like four frames faster, I think. So it's not like instantaneous, but it should be a little bit better for mobility. And then lastly with her, I'm excited about this one because I love the move. Her back two now has significantly more advantage on hit. I think it's like 10. So that means when the move connects, she has a lot more time to, like, she can go for another one, because that's the crushing blow, or she can do, you know, a throw, or whatever media she wants, and she'll have a lot more time to get out her attack before the opponent can do, like, a wake-up. And then, like Raiden, she has a couple others, like her back one, too, has some frame data changes and stuff like that. And then lastly, a lot of people have wondered about Shao Kahn. So... Last week I mentioned that his 434 is now special cancelable. And that also has a change like Raiden where the throw is now a true throw. So the same applies to there. But another move we looked at is his back three. And it's changed across the board. It's faster, it does more damage, and it has an all new hit reaction. It now just sets up combos easily. Like you can I don't play Shao Kahn and I can just easily in training mode do a, a big combo. Like he can just walk up and do his back one or whatever. So it's still an unsafe mid, but it's a little bit faster, and it's much better for doing combos. And then lastly, most characters only have one armor-breaking move. He actually has three. So we already talked about his downward shoulder charge, but both of his anti-air moves, his anti-air grab and his anti-air spear, also break armor. So he's like the armor-breaking master, which makes sense since he's like a... It's a boss character. Right, yeah. So he has a lot of options if you're trying to uh, break away from him, which is pretty cool. Well, that's great. Uh, we'll have the patch notes out soon. There's no ETA on that, uh, but you know, keep following us on Twitter, and when they show up, you'll see them. So there we go. That's just a couple things. There's, you know, look at your character when they come out. That's what we're going to tell you right now. Um, but I think it's now time to move into RoboCop. You want to talk a little bit how RoboCop uh, plays, Steph? Robocop is a pretty, I'd call him like a variety character. Like his, his normal attack base is pretty basic. He just kind of does big boots and punches you in the face. I mean, it's Robocop. Like he's not doing like karate. That would be super weird. 
Um, but his right. special moves, he uses all his weapons. And that's where he gets interesting. He can be a zoner. He can. He actually has a command throw. He can be a trap character with like cow chops and stuff. So it's kind of like his base move set is real simple. He's just a powerhouse. Like he just he does jabs and uppercuts and stuff. But then a special move is where you as the player can shape the play style that you want, which is kind of cool. He brings a full armory to the table, too. Like, you're going to see yeah. that here in a, in a few minutes. Yeah, well, he's walk, got, like, a little bit of everything. Let's take a look at how he walks across the map. So this string is 4-2, and it's kind of like his baseline, like, go-to string. It's got a crushing blow. It's good for punishing. One neat thing it's is he's sweet there. Yeah, he uses his guns and his data spike a lot, which is pretty cool. Both of his throws have crushing blows, the typical crushing blow requirement, which is always really strong in this game. Spikes coming out of his feet, that's, in, that's incredible. Do you think their data spikes as well? Like, can he upload stuff with his feet? Uh, oh, yeah. Pr yeah. Probably? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I think that's... Yeah. I think that's canon, sure. Um, let's take a look at uh, his, nor his normals. Okay, so. Yeah, his 4-2 is awesome as a stagger strain. He can do throws after it. He can loop it. I'll do the crushing blow here. This is just for doing a counter hit or a punish. This is Robobop, his back too. He just bops you and it's like his combo starter. <laughs> Robobop. So this is interesting. His back one is like his fastest hit, and the bombs are part of the normal. You can be close, mean, or far. So it's like a special move, basically. His back three is a low with really good range. He doesn't really have like a great overhead to mix them up, but it's pretty good. And this is like his main pop up, board four. Really good range, decently fast, but. The last hit's a high, so you can just duck and punish it. So you can't just do it willy-nilly, but if you, like, whiff in front of him, you're going to get hit by that. And, uh, bigly damage. Bigly damage. Uh, let's take a look at uh, some specials from the default. So this is default loadout. He, of course, has the auto-9, and it, it is a great projectile. It's super fast. You can amplify it for really good damage. And the Cobra Cannon is awesome. So probably the notable thing here is the pushback on block you amplify it, which I'm about to show. You go way back. So if you're trying to slowly well, advance cannon. through a... Yeah, I mean, it makes sense. <laughs> and while it's a high, the other two hits are mid. So if you're trying to slowly advance, he can push you way back and just start that zoning over again. Then he's got this shoulder cannon, which is pretty similar to bombs in the past game. They're great for space control. He can put them out, force you to move. Then he has an anti-air gun, which is really fast, covers a ton of space, recovers pretty fast. And he has this neat parry, and this is cool because it actually parries projectiles, well it absorbs them. And it acts as a parry for normal attacks, so... I think we're about to show it. And this has a crushing blow, and the requirement is to parry a wake-up attack. And this is one of my favorite crushing blows in Aftermath, because it's it's simple, but it's so satisfying. So the shield is kind of cool because he's got this really good zone and it's very hard to advance because of the Cobra Cannon pushback. And if you try to counter with your projectile, he can absorb your own projectile. And then even when you get in close, he has a parry. So it's pretty cool. I love the and new the, reaction um, when the, the Kano had where when when you did the the, the, the grab off of his wake up it was really cool. And then the, uh, the shoulder cannon, that's directable, right, Stephanie? Exactly, yes. You can put that in front also, of where they're if, going to be behind them, yeah. And if you amplify it, it gives it different properties to how the shoulder cannon will actually work. Regular base, it will just knock you over and do more damage, but variations mm -hmm. have different versions of it that we're probably going to see pretty soon. 
Ooh. Let's take a look at variation two. Well, this is variation one. Oh, we're very one. Sorry, my bad. my bad. So this has a command grab. It picks you up with the status spike. And the fun thing is if he amplifies it, he can turn you around or actually carry you for a little while for really far wall carry. And it's super fun to do because you're picking him up like you're a child or something. <laughs> and this has a crushing blow. For you. It's true. For punishing a wake up roll. So like the idea would be if you throw them into the corner, you think they're going to try to roll out of the corner, roll past you, you pause, do that, they're going to take a lot of damage. Then he has this advancing or retreating auto nine, and he'll slowly walk forward or back, and you decide at what point you want to let it go, or you can cancel it. You also look really intimidating, which I think is important. The animation team nailed his walk, too. It's so good, right? <laughs> oh, man. And then lastly, he gets these amplified bombs, which, as Derek was saying earlier, have a different reaction. Now they shock you, and he gets a combo starter. So this variation has a command grab and significantly better uh, space control with his bombs. Like, the reward is better. Awesome. Love the command grab there and being able to turn around and just walk with them. That's awesome. It's very, very fun. It's, yeah, very obnoxious. Let's take a look at variation two. So this one is probably the best zoning one. His auto nine becomes the slow gun. Hits mid. I'm just calling it low down because he goes low. But this is super fast and it has a crushing blow for going under a projectile. Ooh. Oh, I hate to see that that all the time. He also gains this uh, flamethrower, which is awesome for pressure. Because, you know, they're not knocked down, and then he gets a lot of advantage. He can go up, do his forward two pressure, do a throw, whatever. If the opponent hits a button, they're taking a huge risk. And then he gains this rocket, which to me is the star of this variation. It is awesome. It is super fast. It has a long trail. It's really good if the opponent's jumping around like a maniac. It will anti-air like crazy. It is it is a high, but it's very difficult to react to. It's like one of those projectiles where the opponent's going to use a lot of mental energy, just kind of looking for it to duck. All right. So basically, so, I, I, love, I love the skin there, too. So with like that variation, you basically would kind of want to zone for a while, and if they start to get close, use the, fame, the flamethrower to push them right back, right? Exactly. So it's like pretty good mix up up close to the flamethrower. And then I think the best zoning that he has for sure. And counter zoning with the crushing blow from the low gun. Yeah, that's a, that's a wild crushing blow. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's all I'll say. Uh, let's go into uh, variation three. So this one is like trap based kind of. But first he gets the shoulder charge. This is his armor breaking move. And it has a crushing blow on it by itself for uh, countering from full screen. Yeah, I think I'm doing it as an armor break now. So this is an example of an armor... Oh yeah, that's a lot. This is an example of an armor breaker that's only in one specific variation. Which is... There's like seven... 10 characters that have an armor breaker like that so you're going to have to decide if you want that armor breaking you know you're going to give up like the the low auto 9 or the command grab in variation 2 but you'll have the access to that so it's always the the balancing act of what do you prioritize right uh, oh. we have another video still for variation 3 so this changes his bombs instead of the regular bombs he gets these police strip and that will do dot damage. It kind of works like Aaron Black's acid. Um, and if he amplifies it, it becomes tear gas. So this normally does dot, but then also, if the opponent sits in it too long, they'll get stunned, and then he gets a combo. And he can have both out at the same time. Which, really, you can see this light bar really adds oh, up. Man. It's melting him. Then he also gets this uh, electrify move. And what this does is if the opponent attacks them, they will take damage. So this makes him, like, 
the king of closing out games. Like, he can poop out a bunch of the caltrops, turn on the electric <laughs> thing, and then the opponent, if they're just standing there, they're going to die. If they attack him, they're going to die. So they're just going to die. So if they have, like, you know, 5% left, he's just, you're going to die. Yeah, solid plan. That, that's I a mean, solid plan. And na yeah. Nasty in the corner, too, probably, as well. Exactly. Right on. Let's take a look at the yeah. fatal blow. Oh, go ahead. I'll say after this. I love Ed 2 and 9. I, the <laughs> roar always gets me. That's so awesome. Oh, yeah. Why does he roar? Because he can. So you were going to say you were gonna say something before the Fatal Blue there? Just overall, you can see what I mean, where his normal attacks are just, what are my three ranged moves? Like, what you know, it's there's not a lot of complex stuff here. But then his variations, the special moves, are where it's like, oh, I feel like being a grappler or a zoner or a trap-based character or whatever, which is... Right. A pretty neat uh, design thing, I think. Absolutely. Uh, and let's uh, look at a fatality. That little bonk is my one of my favorite sound designs in that whole thing with the grenade hits him in the head. Uh, yeah. So that is that is Robocop, and and you know just like the characters, other characters we've shown for Aftermath, a lot of different styles that any type of player can find their home somewhere in Robocop Fujin or Shiva. I would say, would you agree with that? Definitely, and like a lot of the guest characters, it's intentionally they're pretty easy to pick up and play. Like. You can have some complex, like, mix-up options with a special move if you want. But, like, his normal attacks. Like, if, if you are a pretty, you're the type of player that you play through story mode and you just want to arrest bad guys with Robocop, like, he has a very simple, easy-to-use move set. If you just want to, you know, do 4 two, one in throws and get some wins, you're good to go. Right on. Uh, Derek... Hey. I believe we have you have some stuff to talk about, but also you're going to start with uh, birthday shoutouts. Birthday shoutouts, you say? Yeah, oh, I did. I did. Absolutely, birthday shoutouts. Here we go. The most electrifying man, uh, Luke Kang. Dwayne Johnson. No, no, uh, a, a different one. A different one. Okay. Uh, Luke Kang, six two four two six five one three. Sure. Ethan Roberts, Zach Murphy, uh, Dion Solano, uh, Mug Musical Noodle, Master Freezy, Burridge Nolan, Eric Tran, Noble Samij, just turned 21, Brett Beeling, Tony Declan, Kelly and Cassidy Payham, Hector Sanchez. We're halfway through. Brian Wing, Dan Wyland, Jackie Martinez, Cami Mag Magnus Magnuson, my life partner Chevy Hussein, Rocco Marquise, John Anderson, little Jandy, and John a very yeah, and a very special birthday shout out to the OG Quan Chi. Michelangelo is turning thirty-two. All right, there's our birthday shout outs, but Derek, that's not all. You have some other things to talk about, uh, towers and such, yes? Yeah, so we have a, a few small changes that we've done to towers. Um, so the rapid and the heroic tower platforms, the modifiers will now actually be affecting both players. So before, you were kind of fighting against the AI and they had these modifiers that would assist them. Now it will affect both players in those two tower platforms. Uh, you will also receive more consumables as rewards. We've increased the, uh, the amount that drop so that people are using more consumables for more difficult content. And of course, you're gonna be seeing augments drop out of almost every tower. And again, we're very excited for you guys to get this new augment update. And then a small change that we also made to the Combat League is you can do friendly matches after a set. So if you had just fought somebody and you're like, oh man, I wanna fight that 
that person again, you can. It's one of the post-match options that you'll be able to uh, play against that person right after that. And it doesn't go into your Combat League stats or anything like that. It's more of just like a private match. I've had that happen so, a lot where I'll play somebody who like beats me. And I'm like, oh, I was so close to beating them, but I want more matchup knowledge with that with that player and how they were playing. And now you get that opportunity to, to maybe if they accept that, you can kind of learn more for, for the uh, character you're playing and mm-hmm. things like that. So thank you, Derek. That sounds awesome. Uh, so we are, it's it's we're less than a day away. It's it's tomorrow morning. Like we are, aftermath will be in everyone's hands. Remember, you can pre-order to get the skin pack. Um, anything else anyone wants to say before we go in? Uh, okay, to everybody, before you rush into training mode and start looking at gameplay changes, play story mode. It's awesome. Don't be one of those people yes. that's too cool for story mode. Nobody's too cool for story mode. <laughs> Rules. Shang Tsung's amazing and I play it. I can't agree more. There. I can't agree more. Yeah, I'm, I am... I'm super excited for people to, to tell us how they feel about the story, the expansion. We've never done anything like this before, and uh, it's a great addition to Mortal Kombat 11. Yeah, it's a ton of fun. Yeah. I, I was smiling the entire time playing that. I'm, I'm very proud of all the teams who put work into, of course, the, the story mode. I sit near cinematics, uh, so... Uh, I, I steal their snacks a lot, so I'm really proud of all of them. I'm excited for them to see all the all the, the the good stuff once this thing comes out. People play it. I'm I'm I cannot wait. The first thing I'm going to do is just play through the entire story in one sitting. And I know that it's a longer. It's it's, it's it, there's going to be some stuff to do, so it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, other than that, tomorrow is the day. We're all very excited. We're so glad, and thank you for being available. Uh, I'm so glad we were able to do these streams. Uh, thanks to all to the team behind the scenes who's been doing this. Uh, uh, Boyer, who's been running us through this whole thing today, uh, Zach, the whole the whole team who's been helping us do this has been really awesome that we were able to pull this off. And now we just have to wait for Aftermath to drop, and we're all very excited. So I guess until then, we'll see, we'll see you again on the Combat Cast soon. Everybody, please stay safe and enjoy Mortal Kombat Aftermath.